first thing, ladies and gentlemen, if you had trouble with this, I would highly recommend that you pay very, very close attention because this process is very, very important. But it's also the same thing over and over. It's redundant. When we're graphing the reciprocal functions, again, the most important thing that I asked you guys to do, or I told you guys to do for these, is to not graph them, but to worry about the reciprocal. y equals 3 cosine of 4x. Let's graph this. Then we'll go through our other pieces of information. Yes? Because we, we should be pretty familiar with what the cosine of 4x looks like. First of all, we can graph the initial period. All of us should know what the initial period of cosine looks like. That graph goes up to 1, goes down to negative 1, has a period of 2 pi. That's what the parent graph looks like. Okay? That's why I'd rather graph this than try to go and graph that. Okay? So, but before I can graph this because this is no transformations, right? Now we have some transformations. So we have to identify what are all these transformations that's happening. And remember, I gave you guys an equation. It looked like this y equals a times cosine of bx minus c plus d. So, do we have an a? Yes. So here we have the amplitude. First thing you want to figure out is what is the amplitude. So amplitude is equal to the absolute value of a, which in this case is the absolute value of 3, which is 3. The amplitude, ladies and gentlemen, tells you how high the graph goes or goes below, um, basically if there's no vertical translation. The better actual description is it's the half distance between the max and the min of the graph. The next thing we want to figure out is the period. How do you find the period? Well, in your notes, that's 2 pi divided by b. b is your coefficient of your x inside of that term. So all I do is 2 pi divided by 4, which is pi halves. Yes? The next thing is to do the x scale, which is just simply your period divided by 4. At least are you writing this down? Because I mean, this is the same thing over your notes that I have already gone over with you guys. So your period divided by 4, so that's going to be pi halves divided by 4. Well, to get rid of that, you're going to want to multiply by the reciprocal, which leaves me at pi over 8. Does anybody, anybody have any questions on how to figure out these four things? No? The only other thing that I would say is what we call our phase shift, or what I called your initial point, your initial start. Because here's your initial period. Your initial period, you can say, starts at 0, even though these graphs continuously go in both directions. So if that's your phase shift, um, your phase shift is going to be if you're moving that at all. Well, all you simply do for that is you take whatever is set inside um, your function, and you set it equal to 0. Well, in this case, I have. 4x is equal to 0, so therefore x equals 0. So there is no phase shift. It's going to start at 0, right? All right. So it asks me to graph two periods. Pi over 8 is going to be my x scale. So I'm graphing secant. So ladies and gentlemen, if this is pi over 8, what's the next one? 2 pi over 8. What would be the next one? 3, three pi over 8. Next one? 4 pi over 8. This isn't that bad, is it? 5 pi over 8. 6 pi over 8. 7 pi over 8. And 8 pi over 8. Now, ladies and gentlemen, though, however, we would prefer that you guys would actually simplify these, right? So pi over 4, pi halves, um, 3 pi over 4, and pi. Oops, pi over 8. OK, does everybody see how I just wrote the simplified form ahead of it? 
Okay, I'm only doing that because I know fractions like destroy many of you as far as understanding them. All right. So we know that one period, they want us to draw two periods. We know that one period is pi halves. So we know our one period should end there, right? OK, now again, let's graph cosine first. Cosine, you're going to start now. Oh, I'm sorry, last thing. Is there any vertical translation? Am I shifting this graph up or down at all? No. So none. So all we're simply going to do, guys, is just graph this graph from the same piece of information. However, the amplitude is not 1 anymore. The amplitude is now what? 3. And since there's no transformation, at least, what you're going to do is you're going to go up to 3 and go down to 3. So instead of the graph starting at 1, it starts at 3. Then what happens at the next x scale? The next x scale is a what? X, X, X intercept. Then at the next x scale is what? The minimum. Then at the next x scale is the intercept. The next x scale is a maximum. Does everybody see how I graph that? Could I continue? Intercept. Minimum, intercept, maximum. Does everybody agree with me? Yes? So the 4x has nothing like the coordinates? No, it changes the period. Because remember, the, four, remember, the oh. period of cosine was originally 2x. But that 4x has now shortened my period to pi halves. Okay. So yes, it did affect it. Because look at, look at where pi is. And see what I did? I like elongated this. Because in reality, the graph would have looked like this. Um, I would have completed two periods. Right? It completes two periods by then. So it's much, it's got shrunk. All right. Now, um, the next thing is remember cosine, what we did to graph, all the only thing I knew taught, the only thing new that I taught last class period is that we understood by using the unit circle that when secant is 0, or when cosine is 0, Secant is undefined. So at every x-intercept, I needed to create asymptotes. Right? Now, what's really important to understand is um, uh, oh, they asked me to find the asymptotes, right? OK, we'll get to that. Um, then. To find the graph, we know that the max and the min shared, and then we approach our asymptotes. OK? So that's what your graph semi looks like. Any questions on that, Megan? What I did, why I did, how I did. OK. So now let's go through the information they asked. They want us to. Locate the vertical asymptotes and graph two periods. All right, asymptotes is easy. Where does my first asymptote occur? Huh? My first asymptote occurs at pi over 8. Now, to get to my next asymptote, how, much, how far over is that? 2 pi over 8, which is what? Four, pi over 4. So I can say pi over 8 plus pi over 4. Because do I add pi over 4 to go to my next 2? And do, could I keep on adding pi over 4? How many times could I add pi over 4? Infinite. Infinite many times. To represent, an, uh, to represent adding it once, 2, 3, 4 to infinity, I could use a variable, which you could use x. We typically like to use n or k. But it doesn't matter. So the asymptote is pi over 8 plus pi over 4. Because, listen to this, what if n is 0? Where is your asymptote? Pi over 8. What if n is 1? It's pi over 8 plus pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 8. What about if it's negative? Pi over 8 minus pi over 4. Well, that's going to be the next asymptote over here, negative pi over 8, right? Yes? 
Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention. So the domain is all real numbers except for these values, right? Domain is all real numbers except for these values. So you could say the domain is going to be all real numbers except, um, I'll say x, yeah, cannot equal pi over 8 plus pi over 4n. What about the range? What is the range of these? Well, how low does this graph go? Negative infinity to how high? Negative 3. So it's negative infinity to negative 3. And then, what about the second part? How low does that go? 3 to how high? Infinity. So union 3 to infinity. But there's nothing in between negative 3 and 3, right? So you got to make sure you understand how to write the domain, right? Yes? You guys have local max. I'm sorry, you have local max, local mins, right? You have parts where it's decreasing from every asymptote to the max to the minimum, it's decreasing. Or from the maximum to the asymptote, it's decreasing? Yes? Would pi now be an asymptote? Huh? Would pi now be an asymptote? Nope. Pi would be, uh, my scaling is just really bad. But no, pi is um, in there. And the other thing, too, guys, if you want to just like double check something, like he asked, is pi an asymptote? I don't, I don't know. Did I graph it correctly? Guess what? You could always go back in here and say, well, how would you evaluate for so cosine? You would do. 1 divided by the co or 1 divided or that's really 1 divided by 3. So that's really 3 divided by cosine of 4x. Oh, and you want to put in pi though, right? So let's put in pi. And the answer is 3, which shows me that it's at that point, right? So you can always check your answer by evaluating in your calculator as well. Okay.